Well, it's Wednesday night again, and here we are back at our diligent study of the Word of God. Welcome back. It's Wednesday night again, and uh, if you can hear me, then you have breath and you're blessed to be here. And tonight is week number six of our second session for this year. We have three sessions every year. They're 13 weeks each. And this is our discipleship program here at Set the Captives Free Outreach Center. We encourage all of our members to get on the path and stay on the path so that they might grow into a full and mature person. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is session number two and class number six. David taught us well when he said, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119 and 11. And so here we are, diligent students of the word of God. If you are consistent and diligent, go on and type, I am both consistent and diligent. I am both consistent and diligent. That means you don't pop in and out, but you are dedicated. Your mind is made up and you're gonna finish what you start. So I applaud you. This is a 13 week course on learning about different translations of the Bible. We learn about their origin, we learn what type of translation they are, what type of translation method they used and embraced in their translating. And also we learn where they fit well in everyday use. And so if this has been a blessing to you so far, type, it has been a blessing. Go on and type, it has been a blessing. It has been a blessing. Now, not only has it probably been a blessing for you, but understand as I teach, it's also a blessing for me. I'm getting a lot out of what uh, I'm teaching as well. So you're not in it alone, but we are learning together. All right. Amen. All righty. So if you're here for the very first time, make sure you write, it's my first time so that we can properly acknowledge you and also welcome you. And we hope that this won't be your last time because there's so much more to learn and we hope you're here to get it. Now we start each class by getting our 100 shares and 100 likes in. I think one week I'm going to stop and say, I'm not teaching till it's 100 likes because every week y'all make me work so hard for these likes and shares, Lord have mercy. If this class has ever blessed you, please go on and share now because you know it'll be a blessing to those you share it with. And if you've ever liked and enjoyed what we do on here, go ahead and put it in there early. But go ahead and get your like and your share in. Don't everybody send it to the uh, official SDCF group because all of you can't send it there. We don't need that many of them there, but we do need you to spread the word let people know that your church has an amazing Bible study that they should really consider checking out. And also keep in mind, you do not have to be a member of our church or a member of Facebook to participate in Bible study. If you click the top of the page there and take that link from the browser, you can invite anyone to come. So go on and take a moment and do that. All righty, so one week, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to say I'm not teaching till it's 100 likes and 100 shares. I bet we get it done quicker. <laughs> All righty, so let's move on and thank you for your likes and shares. Here you see the course outline. So far to date, we have done the New American Standard Bible Translation. That is the closest to the original. So if you're trying to figure out which is the closest to the original Greek and Hebrew, it is the New American Standard Bible. 
Right behind that is the King James Version, one that people tend to use uh, constantly and where we have most of our quotations from. That also is very close to the original Greek and Hebrew, but the New American Standard Bible is the closest of them all. All right. And so from there, we went to the New International Version. After that, we went to the New Living Translation, and that was the one we did last week. And I really like that one. And I absolutely love the one we're coming up on tonight, which is the Amplified Version. Just take a moment, just as a poll, and type in the chat which translation you normally study from. Which translation do you normally study from? Just go and take, I'll, I'll pause for a moment. So let's see what you have. I bet we'll have a lot of King James. And how many of you have flipped and, and switched to a different one? Like I love, I love the King James, of course, because that's what I grew up with. But I'm real, and I like that new international version, but that li new living translation, ooh, I'm liking it a lot lately. I always have loved the Amplified. But which version do you study from? Type it in the chat. And then let me go a step further and say, which translation are you teaching your children from? Your children or your grandchildren? Which translation are you teaching them from? All right, I see they're coming up. Good stuff, good stuff. And if you have more than one translation, um, you know, write both of them, that's fine. Some people use two different translations equally. All righty, so this is a course where we will take a look at different translations of the Bible, and that's what we've been doing each week. And at the end of class, my goal is to get you to be able to choose a translation that really works well for you. How many of you have already done that so far? You may have already started. Okay, before we go any further, I want to give everyone an opportunity to, to give. Amen. You can sow seed into this ministry, whether you are a member, a visitor, or a well-wisher. We take all gifts, right? Because we've got a lot to do. So thank you in advance for your generosity. I would love for this class to have the largest offering tonight. I wonder what would happen if every last one of you gave $10, even those of you who will tune in later and watch this at a later date. Go on, let's do this together. We can get it done. We've done it many weeks, but it would be nice to get it done tonight as well. All righty, so let's get into our lesson. What is translation? That's the first thing we have to decide. If you're here for the first time tonight, you definitely need to know what, what do we mean when we talk about translation. So this class is about translating the word of God from one language to another. It's the process of translating words or text from one language into another. That's the simple definition, okay? The process of translating words or text from one language into another. It's the process also of reworking text from one language into another to maintain the original message and communication. The people who do translation are called translators. And the reason we said reworking the text is because sometimes you have words in a language that don't have a counterpart in a language that you're translating it into, okay? And so when that occurs, it's a much more difficult process because keep in mind the translators are trying to keep it or in the original meaning and the original text. And so they're not trying to change what has been said. 
They're trying to make it understood in another language. But sometimes you don't have a word in, in the language you're translating it into for the word that you're bringing over. So it can be very uh, tedious. As of September, 2022, all of the Bible has been translated into 724 languages, 724. Somebody type 724. That's a lot. It's a lot of languages, isn't it? It's a lot of languages. And then the New Testament alone has been translated into an additional 1,617 languages. That's a lot of translation. And smaller portions of the Bible have been translated into 1,248 other languages, according to the Wycliffe Global Alliance. And I told you last week to look that up if you wanted to know what that is. Amen. So there's a lot of translating going on. And thank God, because the word of God needs to be preached in every language under the sun. So then we learned, because we're going to look at another translation tonight, we learned that translations have, uh, there are two types. The literal translation of the Bible, as the name implies, follows a literal translation principle. In other words, this is the principle that simply believes that every single word in the Hebrew and Greek text should be translated. And again, that's a good position to maintain. However, when there is no word that matches, that's when it becomes a challenge. Okay, so there's literal translation and then there's dynamic translation. If this is new to you, just write down literal and dynamic, literal and dynamic. So in, the, in dynamic equivalence translations, translators attempt to translate the message and the meaning of the original language text into an equivalent English word or expression. These translations are generally less literal on a word for word basis, but still seek to capture the meaning of the original language of the text. So when you have a dynamic translation, it's looking to translate the meaning of the passage, not necessarily word for word. So every word may not be in there. And then you'll see in some cases, as in our, our um, topic tonight, the translators inserted words. So it's, it's, uh, it's very interesting. So you have two types of translation. They are formal equivalent, which means literal. And then you have dynamic equivalent, which means thought for thought, not necessarily word for word. If you don't have those in your notes, write them down now. This is week number seven, so I'm pretty sure most of you have these written down. Formal equivalent, which is literal, dynamic equivalent. All right. Now, when we talk about the Amplified Bible, we want to talk about the word amplify, which simply means to make larger or greater as in amount or intensity. It means to increase the strength or amount of, especially to make louder. Okay, look at that one more time. To amplify means to make larger. Another word that comes to mind when we say amplify, make larger, magnify. People get a magnifying glass to hold over something that's so small that they can't really see it well. And so they put a magnifying glass over it to make it bigger to the eye. And this is what the amplified version seeks to do. It seeks to absolutely uncover the meaning of a passage and make it so clear that no one misunderstands. And you'll see that when we look at our verses, our fundamental verses tonight that we translate every week. You'll see what I'm talking about. The Amplified Bible 
was the first Bible project of the Lachman Foundation in conjunction with Zondervan. Now, many of you are familiar with Zondervan publishers. They publish, have published many, many, many Christian writings, Christian books, Christian writings. And so uh, what I want you to look up in your personal study time is what the Lachman Foundation is. That'll be something good for you to look at in your own study time. What is the Lachman Foundation? I'm not going to put all the answers in your lesson. There's some things I want you to go and look up in your personal study time. It will enhance your study when you do so. All right. So the Amplified Bible, it was the very first project they've had. What if what what I would do if I were you, when I look this stuff in my stuff up in my personal study time, I would look to see what other projects the Lockman Foundation has had. All right. But this was the first project that they had with Zondervan. The first full edition of the Amplified Bible was published in 1965. Now, you know what's amazing about that? This book has been around a very long time. However, it did not become popular until the Word of Faith movement, where you had uh, the Fred Price's and Kenneth Copeland's, when those folks... Uh, popped up and they began teaching the word of God and you had more teaching as well as preaching going on. So then you found people referring to books like the Amplified Version. Uh, and you'll see a little later, the Amplified Version, it absolutely amplifies. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Write a yes or a no in the chat. It literally amplifies. It gives such definition and meaning. Oh my goodness. Okay. So even though it was published in 1965, you rarely heard about it until the late 80s, the 1980s, uh, beginning of the 1990s, you begin to see people use this version and refer to it more. Up until then, it wasn't really a big deal. Now, it is largely a revision. This The Amplified Version is largely a revision of the American Standard Version of 1901 with reference made to various texts in the original languages. So there's a relationship there between the American Standard Version and the Amplified Version, okay? So let's take a look at it because when you see the way the Amplified Version uh, is written, you will understand that it definitely was not done quickly, <laughs> not at all, uh, impossible to be done quickly, all right? And you'll see why it's very wordy. Somebody type very wordy. It's very wordy. And so because of that, you'll see that uh, it, it, it has a lot, it's, it's very detailed. There's no way they could have done this quickly. And as we share, as I've shared in each class, they use a group of scholars to do these translations. So it's never just one person. It's always a group of scholars who have studied Bible history, studied the different languages. It's always a group of those who actually do the translation. So the first stage is six stages. Somebody type six. Somebody type six. The first stage was the Gospel of John, and that was done in 1954. Man, that was done before I was born. 1954 is when the Gospel of John was published. Okay, so understand that this was just a one book translation. Okay, now I want you to note this though. Notice this, the first book they translated was the Gospel of John because the Gospel of John is one of the most thorough uh, writings of the New Testament in which of course the story of Christ and salvation have been shared uh, in great detail. When people first get saved, I usually tell them to read 
the Gospel of John. You want to start there. You want to go from the Gospel of John to the book of Romans. Because those two books in a nutshell cover so much. Oh my goodness, they, they, they're just loaded. And so if you are a new believer, or if you've never thought about, well, should the Bible be read in any specific order? Well, you want to start with the Gospel of John. Then you want to go to the book of Romans. After that, I would spend a great deal of time in the, in the Psalms and the Proverbs. Okay. Now that's not written anywhere. That's my opinion. And I'm saying it is my opinion, but that would be a great place if somebody's, you know, brand new, trying to get established, trying to learn, trying to understand that those are great places to start. You're going to get a basic foundational understanding of God's relationship with man and what he was trying to accomplish on Calvary. I am so thankful for Calvary. If you're thankful for Calvary, just type, I'm so thankful for Calvary. Lord have mercy. So thankful. So they started this project by translating the gospel of John. From there, they went on to, uh, to do the entire New Testament. And it took them four years. They released the Gospel of John in 1954. And then four years later, they had the New Testament. A lot of work. Somebody type a lot of work. And thank God they were diligent because their efforts have blessed our lives. So it took four years to get that done. Then it took an additional four years to get the Old Testament volume two. Watch this. They broke the Old Testament up. They called volume two, the books of Job through Malachi. We know Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. So they started with Job, which again, big job and went through to Malachi. Then they did volume one, which was Genesis through Esther. Okay, so you can see the progression here. Gospel of John, 1954, New Testament, 1958, volume one, uh, volume two, they did that first, 1962, and then volume one, 1964. Wow. And then the complete Bible, by the time they finished all of that work together, in 1965, they released the first full version of what we now have as the Amplified Bible. How many of you have an Amplified? Just type, I do. If you don't have one, you don't have to say anything. But if you have one, just type, I do. I do. Amazing, amazing translation. Um, one that I absolutely love uh, reading, love studying from. Particularly, I'll tell you when it comes in really handy. When you have a verse that just kind of doesn't make sense to you or just it seems strange, you go to the Amplified and it will put a magnifying glass on it for you, I promise you, and make it very, very easy to understand and easy to read. Okay. And so now the first complete Bible was in 1965. But then guess what? 22 years later, you had an updated edition. And we talked about this in other classes. The reason for all the updates is that the language keeps changing. And so in 1987, you had an updated version. Okay. So what is the translation method? Is it literal? Is it dynamic? Which did they do? Well, the Amplified Bible attempts to take both word meaning and context into account in order to accurately translate the original text from one language into another. So the Amplified Bible is another one of those Bibles, uh, I'm sorry, translations that tries to be both literal and dynamic. Do you see that? Did you catch that? It attempts to, the word both is our cue. The Amplified Bible attempts to take both word meaning and context, 
word meaning and context into account in order to accurately translate the original text from one language into the other. Okay, the Amplified Bible does this through the use of explanatory alternate reading, explanatory, I'm sorry, alternate readings and amplifications to assist the reader in understanding what scripture really says. Let me read that to you again. The Amplified Bible, the way it does this, the way it attempts to take both word, meaning, and context into account is through the use of explanatory alternate readings and amplifications. And you'll see this when we uh, get to our uh, end where we look at fundamental scriptures. You'll see it very clearly. Because this, the amplified version is really about the reader understanding what is going on what is being said, what is happening. The Amplified Bible is really big on that, okay? Multiple English word equivalents to each key Hebrew and Greek word clarify and amplify meanings that may otherwise have been concealed by the traditional translation method. And you'll see this, what one of the things that the um, Amplified Bible does that I love is they use a lot of synonyms as they're explaining and amplifying passages. And you're going to see this when we do that in a minute, but they use a lot of synonyms, words that mean the same. So for a word like preserved, they, they would say preserved, kept. And, uh, and held on to. I mean, they just break it out. For one word, they may have three or four different words translated in its place. Now, here's some pros and cons about the Amplified Version. Um, and I've heard them. I've heard them from people who say they won't use it. I've heard them from people who do use it. But the Amplified Bible can be a valuable study tool as the different alternate renderings can give additional insight into the meaning of a text. So we'll look at what they mean by the alternate renderings. The Amplified Bible gives you a lot to look at. So you really, really get deep insight into what's being um, said or what is taking place. So that's a good thing. The problem with the um, amplified version, though, is sometimes when it gives alternate renderings, for it can mean it can mean those things, but does not mean all of those things. Okay, because the fact that a word can have different meanings does not mean that every possible meaning is a valid rendering each time the word occurs. Also, it being based on the American Standard Version results in some of its words sounding archaic. So even though it uh, attempts to bring uh, wording up to our modern day vernacular, sometimes it uses words that are old and that are archaic and that we don't really use anymore. So that's the challenge with it. And also up there saying when it gives alternate renderings, it can mean those things, but it may not, okay? And so you have to be careful with that when you're using the Amplified Bible. Here we go, let's take a look at them. All right, our first translation passage that we've been using, we have five of them. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now, if we compare the Amplified Version to the King James, let's see how close they got. In the beginning, before all time, was the word Christ, and the word was with God, and the word was God himself. Now, you'll see that when we talk about those renderings, look in the parentheses, you'll see before all time. Before all time, that's three extra words that represent the word was. So in the King James, you have was, and the Amplified, you have before all time. 
And this is what I meant when I, somebody typed before all time, this is what I meant when I said it's wordy. The Amplified Bible's very wordy because they're going to put in enough words to make sure that the passage is clear to the reader which believe me, 99% um, of the time, it's a wonderful thing. But you do have that one to 2% where it mm, kind of doesn't really hit the meaning. Um, and you'll notice it when you're studying. If you compare it to other versions while you're reading, you'll see the difference. So how do you think they did on this one? Not bad. I think they did. I think they did okay. Because before all time is very clear easy to understand, and again, shows the fact that, that uh, of the deity of Christ, that he didn't just pop out of thin air, but that he really was with God in the beginning. So that's very helpful. Let's look at the next one, which is John 1, 14. Now, you can just take a look at both of these, just, just pure eyesight and see. One is definitely thicker. One has more words. Because again, it is the amplified version. Somebody type amplified. All right. So in, in the King James version, John 1 14 says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. Now, we already know there's one word in the King James Version that's not going to make it to the Amplify. Go on and type it. Go on and type it. Let me give you a few minutes. Let me see who's been paying attention. <laughs> Go on and type it. There's one word in that, in that King James Version that will not be in the Amplified translation. And if you wrote begotten, you are correct. And we've noticed so far that in almost all of them, all of the translations that we've done so far, begotten is not there because it's not a word we walk around using now. So let's look at the Amplify. You ready? And the word Christ, they put Christ in there to be very clear. The word is Christ. And the word Christ became flesh and lived among us, not dwelt, but lived. And we actually saw his glory. We actually saw his glory. So the word actually, instead of us beholding and beholding, we actually saw his glory. That's very plain, very clear. Glory as belongs to the one and only begotten son of the father. Surprise! Begotten made it in here. The son who is truly unique the only one of his kind who is full of grace and truth, absolutely free of deception. Wow. So I got you on that one. Some of you say, no, I had peeped down there and saw it, but begotten made it in the Amplified is surprising. But not only did it make it, but it's explained the one and only begotten son of the father. Okay, the one and only, not just the only, but the one and only. And then down there in that last line, you have uh, that he is full of grace and truth, absolutely free of deception. Okay, so that's amplified, or as we say, magnified. It's very clear. Somebody type, it's very clear. Okay. So as you see, the Amplified, it's going to add, it has additional wording, but that additional wording seeks to make very clear what the meaning of the passage is. So you see that, that them uh, translating the meaning of the passage, but then you also see the word one, uh, one on one word translation as well, because look at actually in parentheses, denoting that beheld has been changed. So this, um, this is a pretty good version. They did a pretty good job with being both literal and dynamic. All right, let's go to the next one. And all, again, all of these are foundational scriptures that we look at each week, fundamental beliefs of the Christian faith. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All righty, so this time, I know you're already looking down there for begotten, it's there. All right, so this is one of the translations that was pretty kind to begotten. But let's take a look at it. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world, stop. Now, if you look at, let's go back up to the King James Version. Before our first comma, we simply have six words. How many do we have before our first comma in the bottom? How many? Give you, I know you're counting, go on and count. So we have six words before our first comma in the King James Version, but 10 in the Amplified. <laughs> do you see that? So you have four additional words rendered and this is what it talked about the renderings. When we go, uh, go back to what we uh, looked at earlier, this is what they're talking about. So you have all these words added in to give this passage more meaning and more understanding. It's like a magnifier. It's like, like putting a magnifier on a passage and it opens up more fully. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world, powerful, that he even gave his one and only begotten son so that whoever believes and trusts in him as savior shall not perish, but have eternal life. Yum, yum, double yum. Is that delicious? In fact, if I'm leading someone to Christ, I would want to use the amplified version because this is amazing. Look at it so that whoever believes and trusts in him as savior shall not perish, but have eternal life. Wow. This is extremely clear. This is great translation, folks. It's extremely clear. And the words that have been added do not take away from the meaning. What do you all think of this right here? I yum, 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 love this. I love the word of God anyway, but this translation right here, fire. Because you know, at the end of the day, my, I have an anointing to teach. And so when you break down something and make it really cl uh, clear and plain for people to get it, oh, I just love you. <laughs> So this is great. This is great stuff. Amen. Very clear, easy to understand, and definitely true to the original text. It hasn't taken anything away from it. Though it has added some words in there to expound, it has not changed the original meaning at all. And that's what's so important in translation. Don't change the meaning. Somebody type, don't change the meaning. Don't change the meaning. Don't change it. Don't change it. Don't do it. Let's go on. I just love this. Oh, this is so much fun. Who's having fun besides me? I'm just having a good time right here. My whole life revolves around the word of God. I just love it. I love it. I love it. Let's go to our next one. John chapter eight and verse 58. And Jesus said unto them, verily, verily. I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Powerful passage because here again, Jesus is affirming his deity. He's letting people know he didn't just pop up when, when Mary had him, but he was here before that. He existed with God before that. Very fundamentally sound uh, passage uh, that we embrace in Christianity. So now let's look at the Amplified Version. Let's see what they did with it. Jesus replied, not said, he replied, I assure you, strong word, assure, that's a very strong word. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, mm, before Abraham was born, I am. Now let's back up a minute. They did an outstanding job. What do you think? What do you guys think, yes or no, how they do with this one? I think they did an outstanding job, and here's why. First of all, the word assure is a very strong 
um, declaration. Assure means almost certain to happen. I assure you, meaning it is 99.9% probable that what I'm saying to you is true or will happen. So they did a great job with that choice of the word assure. And then most solemnly say to you, oh my God, most so- what does it make you think of? I, I most solemnly swear, court, right? In the courthouse. I'm a, raise your right hand. I most solemnly swear. So, so this passage, uh, it just has so much credibility. It puts credibility on the words of Christ. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. That is so powerful. That is so, so powerful. Oh my goodness, just delicious. I love that. How many of you love that with me? How many of you are gonna be spending some time hanging out in the Amplified Translation? Because this stuff is good, man. I mean, they really did a great job. Really did a great job there. Let's go on to Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through nine. Now look, folks. You have three lines and one one word over at the top. You have about eight lines down the bottom. (laughs) So we already know this, this passage has been amplified. Look at the difference in the volume. You already know that they they really made some incredible inserts here. All right, let's take a look at them. So at the top you have, and again, very, very fundamentally powerful passage. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We've all heard that. We understand it. Now let's see how much more plain and clear they were able to make this. For it is by, I'm reading the Amplified, for it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor, drawing you to Christ, that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life. Let me pause right there. That is so delicious. That is so, that's the first passage, the first part of the passage. And look how they have magnified it or amplified it. They have blown it up real big and clear. So you know exactly what's being talked about. For it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor, drawing you to Christ that you have been saved actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith. Whew. So that's the whole, those, those three lines plus one word, that's the whole first line up top, but it's so good. And this salvation is not of yourselves, not through your own effort, but it is the undeserved gracious gift of God not as a result of your works, nor your attempts to keep the law, so that no one will be able to boast or take credit in any way for his salvation. Whew, man, that makes me want to preach. That, 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 that right there, man, you can, you can preach on that passage all day long. God's remarkable compassion. Any other preachers on this call? How do y'all feel about that meat right there? That's a whole, man, if we were at Burger King, we would say we just got a Whopper. That's a Whopper. Oh my God, look at all the meat in there. God's remarkable compassion. If I were to preach this, I would deal with God's remarkable compassion. The fact that we've actually been delivered from judgment and given eternal life, the fact that it is the undeserved gracious gift of God and and that none of our attempts to keep the law, this this thing is full. This is a series. (laughs) Oh my God, this is so good. But do you see the difference? I know, I know as you're looking at it, does this blow your mind? What do you guys think? Put some comments in the chat, please. Talk back to me. What do you all think? This is powerful. This is some good stuff. Oh, my God. 
So here's the thing you might want to think about, just, just a thought. If I'm a preacher, I may preach from the King James version of it, but teach from the Amplified. It make, make sense? Preach from the King James version, but teach from the Amplified. So this is where different translations come in and they're very helpful because while on, on, you know, Sunday morning is for inspiration, Wednesday night is for information. Somebody type inspiration, information. All right. And people get that mixed up. They say, well, I go on Sunday, but if you're not in, enrolled in any biblical studies, you're still really not getting all that you need to get. So I might teach, preach rather on this King James version on a Sunday morning, and then turn right around and preach on it on the Amplified version, um, teach rather on the Amplified version on a Wednesday night. It's just so, it's so much there. It's so powerful. So, so powerful. I just love it. This is why I don't know about you, but I never get bored with the word of God. There's so much to learn. There's so much we don't know. There's so much to learn. And you can take one passage like this passage right here in the Amplified. You literally can, can study and chew on that for about five weeks, five to six weeks. Get all that in your spirit real clear. I mean, and you, you'll really be able to help some other folks. And that's the whole point. Um, we are have to be apt to answer and able to answer those who question us about the hope that we have. That's the word of God. We should be able to respond to people and, and not say, well, let me take you to church. They'll explain it. No, you explain it. He saved you. What happened? Talk to, to them, right? All right, let's move on to Titus. This is our last passage that we compare, but Titus 2.13, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. That is the King James Version and the Amplified, only, only a little extra, awaiting and confidently expecting, oh my God, the fulfillment of our blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. Look at that. So, so awaiting and confidently expecting. Somebody type, I am confidently expecting. Ah, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's just absolutely amazing. Awaiting and confidently expecting. Amen. That's what it means when you're standing in faith, you are waiting and you're confidently expecting the fulfillment or whatever it is that you're looking for God to do that he promised, amen? So um, I would say the Amplified from, from one to 10, what would you give it in terms of translation? What score would you give it? Put them in the chat now. I'm giving it a 10 plus. <laughs> I think it's uh, excellent. I think they did a really great job. And I think they really met their goal of amplifying and making the passage fuller and clearer to understand. Yeah, I, I like it. I really like it. I think many more of us are going to be using the Amplify, and I really need to start using it more when I preach too. I tend to stick to King James because it's uh, it's what we've always used and what people understand best, but I, I can see myself in the future going to some using, uh, utilizing some other translations because there's so much good stuff out there. Oh my goodness. So much good stuff. All righty. All right. I already know that we have met our goal of a hundred likes <laughs> and a hundred shares. I, I am confident that you all have fulfilled the mandate. So um, make sure you have liked and shared tonight. If this was your first time here, make sure you say this was my first time because we absolutely, first of all, want to acknowledge you and we want to invite you to come back anytime. 
The word of God is for the people of God, not for any one church. And so we out Bible study classes are always going to be open to the public. We always want you to enjoy, enjoy what we are learning and sharing and growing in together. Amen. All righty, let's get ready to close in prayer. And I look forward to seeing you on this Sunday, which, uh, Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you for the gift of life and the gift of your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and continues to be a light unto our path. Now help us, Father, as we're learning to implement what we, we're getting, not just to sit it on a shelf, but to really utilize it in our daily lives because there, that's where the blessing is. So we love you, we praise you, we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Be safe out there, God bless you and we'll see you soon. We'll hope, Hopefully we'll see all of you on Sunday. God bless you.